With billions of users on social media every day, scrolling, watching, and double tapping, our need to be recognized and validated by others has never been more apparent. With this has come the rise of the social media influencer, an individual who has monetized their presence online by their ability to sway and impact the purchasing decisions of their followers. The word influence itself can mean to control, move by power, or to affect by gentle action. The power of influence is that most people don't even realize when they are being influenced. It's not so obvious that you're being sold to, but through subtle suggestions or intentional product placement at just the right time, influencers increase the desire of their audience to buy a product, make a decision, or hold a belief without them even knowing what's really happening. Influence doesn't force, it convinces. It doesn't prove itself, it creates desire. While some strive for authority to gain power, many more are realizing the power of influence. Where authority affects behavior, influence affects one's belief. That's the power of influence. And the truth is, we all have it. Even more, we get to choose how we use the influence that we've been given. As we continue our Wise Women of the Bible Study series, I want to introduce you to Deborah, a wise woman of influence who teaches us how to wisely use our influence for the glory of God. We read about her in Judges chapter 4, verses 4 through 10 that reads, Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. She used to sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the people of Israel came to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Berak, son of Abinim from Kadesh, Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded you, Go, gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 from the people of Naphtali and the people of Zebulun. And I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to greet you by the river of Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called out Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. And 10,000 men went up at his heels, and Deborah went up with him. During the time that Deborah was a judge to the Israelites, they had been in bondage to the Canaanites for 20 years. As they cried out to God for help, the Lord heard their cries and told Barak to go up against Jabin's army. Jabin was the king of Canaan who harshly oppressed the Israelites. God had already told Barak that he would be victorious in battle to acquire the freedom of his people. But Barak did not go as the Lord instructed. What we know from Deborah's words to Barak is that they were both aware of God's promise to give Israel victory over their enemies. But their response to this promise was different. Barak decided not to do anything. Deborah, on the other hand, was ready to act. Now, why was their response so different to the same promise of God? For one, Deborah believed God and took him at his word. Barak, on the other hand, believed more in Deborah and her relationship with God than his own, which is why he tells Deborah that he will not go to battle without her. So Deborah could have said, you no good man, I'm going to battle myself. But Deborah was wise enough to know her role. She knew that she was not the one that God called to go to battle. Barak was. She was not a warrior. She was a prophetess. For Deborah to take over Barak's position, even though he wasn't willing to go himself, would not have fulfilled God's promise for victory. Barak's inaction and Deborah's misguided action could have led to many more years of captivity for the Israelites. Now, Deborah does say in response to Barak that if she goes to battle, victory will be given to a woman. 
It's natural to think that she's talking about herself, but she's really prophesying about how Cicero will be killed, which if you read on in the text is at the hands of another woman named Jael. So Deborah doesn't say this as an insult to Barak, but a prophecy of what will happen. Another option Deborah had when Barak refused to go to battle was she could have made Barak feel bad and emasculated him by saying she would not go and he needed to man up. But Deborah was wise enough to know that tearing someone down and pointing out their weaknesses or telling them to figure it out on their own does not help them to get better. It actually does the opposite. Had Deborah refused to go just to make a point and then Barak didn't go either, an entire nation of people would still be in jeopardy of prolonged captivity. So instead of taking matters into her own hands or refusing to go with Barak at all, Deborah uses the power of influence to move Barak's heart and feet into action so that Israel could be victorious and gain freedom. I wonder what freedom and victory await you and those in your life if you learn how to hone in and properly use your God-given power to influence. I wonder what relational challenges you could avoid if you choose to stop controlling and start to godly influencing. I believe it could make all the world of difference in your life and the lives of those around you. So how do we operate and administer godly influence? As we look to Deborah, we can learn three important characteristics that make up a woman of influence and how to live like this woman. First, a woman of influence is motivated by God's word and not people's opinion. From the text, we learn that Deborah was judging Israel at a time when they had been disobedient to God. Much of the book of Judges is this cyclical story of the Israelites following God, disobeying him, facing the consequences of their disobedience, repenting, and then doing it all over again. During Deborah's time as judge, the Israelites were in captivity because they had strayed away from God's truth. Yet, every day, people would come to Deborah to settle disputes and to receive her judgments. She was trusted because of the wise counsel and righteous judgment she provided. I love the fact that Deborah, in a time where God's people had strayed away from God's word, stayed true to his truth. She didn't just tell people what they wanted to hear to use her influence to get what she wanted. Instead, she used her influence to establish God's truth among the Israelites. Often people feel to have influence, you must tell people what they wanna hear to get them to like you. But a true godly influence stays true to God's word despite public opinion because it's the truth of God that helps people. Notice how people came to Deborah and trusted her, although she rightly judged based on God's truth and not what people wanted to hear. It's not people liking us that changes souls, but God's word. If we don't hold true to God's word, we take the strength out of any influence we might have. We then may be popular, but not powerful to help bring true solutions to people's lives. And that's why people kept coming to and trusting Deborah. She didn't have to force herself on anyone because she was influential. She was a solution to the problems of her people even when it went against culture that was out of alignment with God. She was so close to God that instead of culture changing and impacting her, she was able to change it. And that's what true influence is about. She motivated God's people back to him, but it started with her own commitment to God and his truth. If we wanna be influential, it starts within. Godly influential power starts in our hearts way before it overflows to impact others. So how do we do this? We influence from the inside out. We remain filled with God's love and truth by reading and studying the word, praying, fellowshipping with other believers. We do all this to strengthen ourselves so we can look like Christ who is drawing all people to himself and not look like the world. Looking like the world is not influential. Why would anyone be impacted by someone who is doing exactly what they can do themselves? This is why Jesus calls us to be light in a dark world. 
So following God will make you stand out in culture. But if we want to be influential, we are supposed to stand out. Our godliness should make the world look on and wonder, what is it that she has that I want? It draws people in to then be pointed to our God. Next, a woman of influence invites others to a better way of life. Not only does Deborah stay true to God's word and live out his truth, she invites others to do so as well. A woman of influence doesn't just want the world to look at her just so they can think highly of her. A woman of influence graciously and humbly invites others to also live to their full potential in God. I love how Deborah reminds Barak of God's word. She doesn't tell him what he needs to do or criticize him for his inaction. Instead, she reminds him of the promise and truth of God on his life and invites him to live it out. Many influencers today just want you to look at them and see them. They post and create only to get the attention of their audience, but it stops there. But for the Christian woman, our influence isn't just for ourselves. It's not just so we can feel good because people notice us. We don't need all that because we're already secure in Christ that we are seen and accepted by God. This then gives us the freedom to live for him without worrying what the world thinks. And our influence then is used to build up the kingdom of God by pulling out the potential of others. It's easy to look at other people's lives and see how they are messing up. It's easy to see someone else's blind spots and call out their shortcomings. It's easy to compare what we're doing right to what we feel everyone else is doing wrong. But what benefit is that to the kingdom of God? If we only point out others' weaknesses and not their strength and potential, we do way more harm than good. It's a woman of influence who can see the good in people and call it out. Well, you might be thinking, I just got to tell it like it is. If you're wrong, you're wrong. There's some truth to that. But we're not only called to speak the truth. We are called to speak the truth in love. And only pointing out someone's weaknesses, tearing them down, condemning them, attacking them with your words is not loving. A woman of influence uses her words to heal, restore, and build up. Instead of trying to motivate people with fear and manipulation, a woman of influence motivates with the promises of God and speaking life over those in her influence. Godly influence builds trust because it is gracious and safe. Next, a woman of influence is fearless to live out God's truth. Deborah was not intimidated by her enemies. So when Barak invited her to battle, there was no hesitation on her part. She was willing to go. She didn't just speak God's truth and only demand others to live it out. She lived it out herself. This is the mark of a true woman of influence. She is influenced by God first to live out what she influences others to do because she truly believes in God and is not fearful of man. I saw a story the other day of a social media influencer who posted an image on her Instagram account with a picture of her using an Android phone. She was promoting the phone and most likely had been paid by the maker of the phone to share it on her social media account to influence others to buy it. In the description of the image, she shared how she always uses this phone and how she loved it. There was just one small problem. In the small metadata about the post, there was text that read, posted from my iPhone. When called out by another user, she quickly removed the post because it was obvious that she most likely was only sharing about this phone for financial gain. She didn't actually use it herself, not even to post the image saying that she did. A godly woman of influence doesn't just inspire and motivate others to follow God because of her words, but because of her life and how she lives. Deborah embodied this so much that Barak would not go to battle without her. And while this reveals some shortcomings on his part, it also reveals the level of influence Deborah had an influence that brought victory to her nation because she wasn't afraid to live out what she preached. As women of influence, it's not just enough to know God's word. We must boldly live it out, not intimidated by the world, not hesitant by our flesh, 
but fearlessly ready to take God at his word with our lives. It's this type of life that inspires, motivates, and influences others for the good and glory of God. Daughters of God, it's time to be motivated by God's word and not what's popular. It's time to call out the promises of God and potential in others to invite them to a better way of life. It's time to fearlessly step out in faith and do what God is calling you to do because the world is watching. It is time for the Debras of our generation to rise up because we have an opportunity to overtake a desperately dying and dark world with the light of Christ through the power of our God-given influence. If you enjoyed this video Bible study, I want you to know that this video is part of the Wise Women of the Bible Study series that we hosted on the Beloved Women app. If you want to watch all of our videos about wise women in the Bible and how you too can live as a wise woman of God, be sure to join the Beloved Women app or become a member at belovedwomen.tv. I look forward to studying with you. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, be beautiful, be blessed, and be loved.